Hey folks, this is part three of building a Unity leaderboard with Hasura, and we're going to implement high scores with Hasura actions. So what are Hasura actions and what are they good for? We have our database of do because we're using Cthulhu props. We have our players and we have our current score, 100 points. Even if our new score is 50 points, which is lower, it will still, the mutation will still go through right now. So what we really want is, instead of running a mutation, we'll run an action and our new score will pay a visit to this friendly octopus face thing. Is this Cthulhu? Business logic will check the values because that's how we'll write it. 100 points, hmm, let's see, 50 points, hmm. What if we had a higher score? like 300 points. All right, we can be friends. The business logic sees that it all checks out, so goes ahead and runs the mutation. And the Cthulhu universe rejoices. And there's chaos, and more creatures come in and wreak havoc across the realm. So how do we actually implement this Hasura action? I'm gonna show you that right now. Here is our leaderboard that we implemented before, we're showing live players. So I clicked display top live players. That's the view here. And so ideally what we want when we add, for example, Poppy is the current player. So if we update the score to 40, update score, because it's live, it updates, it, we can see the update. Um, ideally we don't want it to update if it gets lower, right? Because we want to show high scores. So that's what we're going to implement with Husser Actions. So here's our mutation where we're updating the score and it takes in the user ID and the score. So we need to change this. So here's the derive action button that we're gonna use. But in order to use it, we need to have variables. So let's rename this to update score and it will take in player ID, which will be type UUID and it will take in score, which will be type int. And then those will be basically these things in here. So player ID and the score will be score. So the way you pass in variables, you just bring this up here and you say player ID is what I just copied and score is let's say 60, right? So let's do a test run. And it works. Dim sum got 60 points. So what we can do now, because it has variables, is we can derive an action. So we derive action from that. And here's our new action. We have an action definition with the input and output. We have new types. The output has ID name and score. We have a handler, which we're going to update in a second. We have the kind, so asynchronous is if your handler is going to take a while, you can subscribe to the response, but we're just going to use synchronous right now. And then you can forward some headers if you want. So create. And we've got a brand new action you can see on the left here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to this code gen tab here. This is really convenient because you don't have to write all this out yourself. You can just copy paste. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing. This is basically the handler code. So up here, there's a drop down with uh, different versions of this that you can try out. And we're going to do Node.js Express. And you can see you can try on Glitch or you can download a starter kit if you want to try on your local machine. We're going to try this on Glitch because we're crazy like that. And what Glitch does is it creates this bare bones Node.js Express project and it has these version with the handlers. So if you go to index.js, you can see that every route is hooked up to a handler based on the name of the route. So we're going to name our route update score and it will be handled by handler slash update score. So handlers slash update score. So we'll just duplicate this and name it updatescore.js. And in here, we're going to paste all that code that we copied. We're going to look at this code in a second, but let me just hook up the link here. So click the share dropdown and get the live app. 
URL here and copy that. And we're just going to tell Asura in the modify tab to call that uh, URL. So we'll paste that in here and slash update score, right? So because that's what we named it. So we save that. Cool. So now we can actually look at the code. So what we have is the Asura operation, which is the mutation that we created before. It takes in the player ID and the score and it updates the player by PK and returns the ID name and score. We have the execute function, which actually runs that mutation on our API endpoint. And we have the handler, which is going to have the business logic in it. Right now, for testing purposes, purposes, for testing purposes, we'll leave the business logic blank and run the mutation like it's a regular mutation. So we have the request body input, and we get the ID and score from there. And then we have data and errors after we execute the mutation. And then based on those, we return a response. So let's test this out now. Go back to Asura, go to graphical, and you'll see on the left here, we actually have a new mutation. So let's do it from scratch. So delete everything and go down, add a mutation, get that new one, update score. Let's get this player ID. And we don't need these variables anymore, so you can delete those. And plug that into here. And the score can be 10. And we'll get the ID name and score back. So let's run this mutation. And it runs like a regular mutation, even though it actually called, behind the scenes, it called our handler here. What we want to do next is run some business logic. Um, let's say if. I'm just going to do some arbitrary checking on the score just to show you how it works. So if the score is less than 10, we're not going to update it. OK, so we're going to return an error. So we'll say score too low. Let's see now how that works. Let's run and let's set it to something less than 10 and run that. There we go. We got the score too low error. So this is how we know that we're actually calling our handler. All right. So now let's actually do the thing that we wanted to do, which is to check the current score. So we want to check this against the current score. And if it's less than that, we don't want to let it go through. The way we're going to do that is we're going to run actually a query. So it's going to be just like this, except it'll be a query. And maybe we'll name this mutation. And we'll name this one query. Down here, we'll pass in the operation that we want. Which means that the execute function down here will have to take in the operation as well. So Hasura mutation. So now what we want to do is change this query to actually be a query. So we'll replace this whole thing and go back to Hasura and add a query it's going to be players by pk and we want the score and we'll paste in an id and we don't want the mutation anymore so this query works but once again we need variables in here so we'll say get player score we'll take in the player id which will be uuid required and that will be this Player ID, and then down here we get player ID that. Okay, let's give it a shot again, and it still works. So this is the query that we want in our function. So let's go back here and paste that in here. So this is the query we want to run. And we're going to run this query inside here. So it's going to be just like this, except up here. And it's going to be the query, which will take in just the player ID. And we'll rename this to query data and query errors. So if we get query errors, we'll return an error, right? We should still do that. If we have query errors, we have query errors. If not, we're good. So we're going to run some business logic. But before we do that, let's actually log what we're getting here. Console log 
query data. So let's give that a try. Go back to Asura. We don't need the query anymore. We just need the mutation. Then we remove the variables and we run this mutation. So what we have logged here is what we actually want to get from the data. So we have data players by PK score. So here, query data players by PK dot score. So if our new score is less than our current score, we want to say score is too low. Or actually, score hasn't increased. Let's see if this is working. Go back to Asura and hit this again. Well, we can even say less than or equal to. And go back to Asura, play this again. Score hasn't increased. If we get a lower score, it hasn't increased. What if we get a 30 and score should increase now? Yep, that works. So our business logic is actually working the way we intended. Now all we have left to do is to implement this in our Unity project. And in order to do that, we just need this update score mutation. So we just need to update our update score <laughs> mutation with this capital version. So if you go back to the project, you'll actually see, I'll hit stop here and go back to leaderboard API. We have an existing update score mutation that is the regular mutation. And that's in our code here. We're calling it here. So all we have to do is replace this with capital update score. And you can see in our mutation that all we're passing our player ID and score. So go back to the code. And here, all we need to pass our player ID and score. And the last thing we need to do is actually add this mutation. So go back to Unity, stop, go to our API, and we'll create a new mutation. And you'll see that, oh, we forgot to introspect. So these are the old, this is from the old schema. So we just need to introspect again. And now I'm going to delete this one and create new mutation and update score. There's our new action. So that's the one we want to add. We'll just call it update score action just to make it clear that it's our action. And confirm mutation. And let's create fields to return. And that's it. Um, because I called it update score action, I actually need to change that in the code again. So let's call that. And let's see if this is actually working. Go to Asura test, hit play, display top live players. And Poppy is the current local player. Let's give Poppy 50 points. That still works. Let's give Poppy 40 points decreased again. And it didn't update, and that's what we wanted. So this is exactly what we wanted to happen. 60 points. That works. And 30 points. It doesn't update. Yay, so it works. There you have it. That's how you can use Hasura Actions to implement high scores with our Unity leaderboard. And that's it for today. Bye.